Welcome to another MATLAB video. In this video, we'll be discussing how to index elements in a matrix. This is how we reference smaller parts of a matrix that we want to work with, based on their location within a matrix. Elements can be located using the index number of the row and column they reside in. These numbers are invisible and assigned by MATLAB, starting at 1 in the top left corner, and then they increase by 1 to right for columns and down for rows. For the following examples, I'm going to demonstrate how to index different elements in a matrix using an auto-generated 4x4 matrix using the magic function. Let's start with indexing a singular element. Once we've identified the singular element we want to index, we need to type the name of the matrix it's in, and then a set of parentheses. In the parentheses, we type the index number of the element's row, comma, the index number of the element's column. For this example, we would type m3, 1 to return the first element in the third row. Now that we know how to index one element, let's index two elements that aren't next to each other in a row. Say we still want to index the first element in the third row, but we also want to index the third element in that row. This is similar to the first example, but when we get to the column section of the parentheses, we need to create a list of columns our desired elements reside in, within a set of brackets, and separate the numbers with commas. This returns a vector containing the multiple elements we have indexed. If we want to include the second element as well, we could include the second column in the brackets, or we can replace the brackets by inputting a range with the colon operator. This is the most efficient method when indexing multiple elements that are next to each other. To input a range in the column section, we type the index number of the first column, colon, followed by the index number of the last column we want included. To extend our index to include the fourth column, the range just needs to be increased to add column 4. This can be done multiple ways. One way is by simply typing 4 to select the fourth column. A second way is by typing end to select the end of a row. The end function acts like a specific index number, but the number of the row or column it's indexing can change, if the matrix changes dimensions. Using this function in place of a number ensures that no matter how a matrix may get changed, this method of indexing will always identify the last element in a row if inputted in the column section, or vice versa. Now looking at the current array being indexed, we can see that we've identified an entire row, we can simplify this line of code by substituting just the colon operator in place of our range. Using the colon operator by itself selects the entirety of the section being specified for indexing. To index more than a singular row and column, we can combine methods in both sections of the indexing set of parentheses to return a more complex submatrix. For example, typing m colon comma with one comma end in brackets returns a matrix containing the whole first and last columns of the M matrix. As a note, all of the methods shown in this video can also be used to index matrices containing string elements as well. If you want to learn more about indexing and its applications in MATLAB, check out the links in this video's description to the Matrices and Array doc page, as well as some more videos that utilize indexing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.